Alright, so in this video we're going to go through an example where we are given the graph of the derivative and we're trying to determine some information about the original function. So here I have a graph of a derivative, let's call it g prime of x. I just really want to emphasize this is the graph of the derivative of a function, and we're going to ask a bunch of questions about the original function g. So the first thing I'm going to ask is on what intervals is g, the original function, increasing? So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and give this a try. And to do this, I want you to just remember that increasing means the derivative is positive. Specifically, the outputs of the derivative are positive. So knowing this, give it a shot and see what you come up with. All right, so as I mentioned before the pause, the function g, the original function, is increasing when the derivative g prime is positive, and specifically when the derivative has positive outputs. So we want to look at where the graph of the derivative is above the x-axis. So I'm seeing that between negative 4 and 0 on the x, we have positive outputs, and then again from 0 to 5, we have positive outputs. So again, what's happening here is we have the graph of the derivative, g prime, and we're looking at when its outputs are positive. So we have for when the original function is increasing, the interval negative 4 to 0, unioned with the interval from 0 to 5. And we don't include the point 0 here because at 0, the output, the output of the derivative is equal to 0. This means that zero corresponds to a critical point, so it's not a place where the function g is increasing or decreasing, so we don't include it in our answer about where the function is increasing, and we won't include it when we ask the next question about decreasing either. Okay, so unsurprisingly, the next question I have for you is, on what intervals is g of x, the original function, decreasing? So remember, decreasing means the outputs are negative, specifically because decreasing corresponds with a negative derivative. And so here, by looking at the graph of the derivative and seeing where it is below the x-axis, we can tell that the original function is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 4 and from 5 to infinity. Okay, so the next set of questions I'm going to ask is, where are the locations of the local maximums and minimums on the original function g of x? So hearing this question, I want you to just pause the video and think about what might be the answer. How might you find this answer given the graph of the derivative? So what's important to remember here is that the graph we are given is the graph of the derivative. So it might be tempting just to point to the peaks and valleys and to call those the local maximums and minimums, but we want the local maximums and minimums of the original function, not of this graph we have, because this graph is of the derivative. Okay, so let's talk about local maximums first. Local maxes occur where the derivative changes from positive to negative. So this is where the original function changes from increasing to decreasing, so the derivative changes from positive to negative. Looking at our graph of the derivative, we want to look at where it crosses from above the horizontal axis to below the horizontal axis. So we're changing from positive outputs to negative outputs. And here we see that this happens at x equals 5. Moreover, at x equals 5, the output of the derivative is 0 which we know needs to be true in order for it to be a local max or min. The derivative has to be equal to zero at those points. So because at x equals five, the outputs of the derivative, the derivative values change from positive to negative, we know that this is the location of a local maximum on the graph of the original function g of x. All right, so we're gonna follow a similar logic for finding the local minimums. Local minimums occur where the derivative changes from negative to positive. So we're looking for places on the graph of g prime where our outputs are changing from negative below the x-axis to above the x-axis, positive. And I'm seeing that this happens at x equals negative 4. We have negative outputs and they become positive outputs. And at negative 4, we have an output of 0, which means the derivative at negative 4 is 0, which is what we need for it to be a local max or min. And we're sure it's a local minimum because we're changing from negative to positive at that value. 
All right, so we have one other place that has a derivative output of zero, and we haven't talked about this yet. So I wanna take a second and go through what's happening here at x equals zero. So near x equals zero on our graph of the derivative, the outputs are positive, then they become zero at zero, and they are staying positive afterward. So because we have a positive, then zero, then positive, this doesn't correspond to either a local max or min on the original function. So as I'm graphing here, you could imagine a positive slope, then leveling off to be a zero slope in the middle, and then making a positive slope again. So here I'm just sketching something that might be happening on the original graph of g, and the idea here is that at this point x equals zero where the slope is zero, this isn't a local max or a local min, because the function is just going positive, then leveling off, then increasing again. Anyway, just wanted to take a little side note to make sure we really understood what was going on at x equals zero in comparison to at x equals negative four and x equals five. All right, well that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.